turn them over to God. Well, we are in the midst of a message series on weird words. All those weird words that Christians use that sometimes we don't even understand what we're talking about. And we've been going through, through them this fall. We'll wrap it up. Um, next week we'll, we'll look at some weird words like end times, eschatology, uh, those kinds of, of things. Uh, but today, uh, it's one that is not quite so weird, or at least maybe not on the surface. I want to start uh, just by reading one verse from Ephesians 2.19, and I'm going to read it um, not from the usual version that I read from in my preaching, but I'm going to read from the Revised Standard Version. And I'll explain that in a minute. So then, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Last Monday was All Saints Day, and so that makes today All Saints Sunday. Christians not only use weird words, but we use weird calendars. I mean, who celebrates All Saints Sunday out in the world? I mean, our calendars just sometimes don't, don't match up with the rest of the world. I mean, the world celebrates Black Friday, and we have Good Friday. You know, instead of the, the winter solstice, we have Christmas. And instead of counting down the number of shopping days left till Christmas, well, we count down the days of Advent. I saw in an advertisement this week that Aldi has come out with their new Advent calendars so you can count down the days till Christmas. And uh, do you know what an Advent calendar is? For each day, you open up a little, little window and, and maybe there might be... A, a picture or a Bible verse, or, or if you get one of these fancy, all these calendars, there might be a chocolate behind each day. So it's a chocolate a day to count your way down to Christmas. But if chocolate isn't your thing, all these also has cheese advent calendars. <laughs> and for your furry friends, they have cat treat uh, advent calendars. And uh, somebody was saying after the first service that... Uh, um, they also saw a wine advent calendar. And I don't know how they get the bottles in those little calendar boxes, but Christians are a little bit different. We're a little weird. And an advent calendar is, is maybe something that's, that's strange, another weird word. But we're not going to talk about advent today. Um, we, maybe we can get to that when we, when we actually hit advent. But today is All Saints Sunday, and so we're going to talk about the word saint. Now, saint is probably one of the least weird words that we could talk about because the problem with, with saint is not that people don't know what it means, it's that it has so many different meanings and not all of them are biblical. One way people use the word saint is to describe somebody who's been especially good or kind to you. Oh, she's a real saint, we might say about someone. I've told the story before how uh, my son Lee was, uh, was hit in the head with a baseball bat and a crust in his skull and they had to do emergency surgery and put his head back together with titanium plates. Um, but while he was recuperating in the hospital, he got a visit from an NFL player. And it was a busy training camp, but this player took the time off to visit the kids in the hospital. No, I don't know what Lee thought about him other than that he was the biggest human being that he'd ever seen. <clears throat> but I was impressed to see an NFL player. I'd never met um, an actual NFL player. And he spent his limited free time visiting the sick kids in the hospital. That guy was a real saint. A New Orleans saint, that is. After, the New After that, the New Orleans Saints became my second favorite football team <laughs> until they tried to kill Brett Favre in the 2009 uh, NFC Championship, and now they're dead to me. But <laughs> when Christians are talking about saints, we're not talking about the New Orleans football teams. But we do sometimes use the word to describe people who show special goodness. 
Another holiday that we have each year have, is Veterans Day. On November 11th, Americans will celebrate our veterans who have served and, and those who gave their lives as well for our country. But there's another date that recognizes four special people who have shown such compassion and faith, such righteousness back in, in World War II that they are remembered with their own special holiday. It's February 3rd, and the holiday is Four Chaplains Day. Have any of you ever uh, heard of Four Chaplains Day or gone to a Four Chaplains Day celebration? Our local uh, VFW every year had a special service uh, on February 3rd to remember these four chaplains. There's been movies made about them and everything. And the VFW would try to get somebody to represent each one. And since one of them was Methodist pastor George Fox, I was invited to, to play the role of uh, the Methodist pastor. Another one was a rabbi, Alexander Good. There's a Catholic priest, John Washington, and a Reformed Church pastor, Clark Poling. And these four chaplains were aboard the troop ship Dorchester back during World War II when it was torpedoed by a German submarine. In the sudden darkness, the men panicked, but the four chaplains stepped into action and they began to hand out life vests to the men, but there weren't enough for every person. And so each one of those chaplains took off their life jacket and gave it to another person knowing that that would seal their fate. And then as the ship went down, the four chaplains linked arms, they joined in prayers, and they sang hymns, and they went down with the ship. Now you could call such chaplains saints for their selfless care for others. But even though one of them was a Catholic priest, none of them are official saints. None of them carry the title. They don't have an ST in front of their name, you know, like St. Like Thomas, St. Francis, St. Teresa. See, to be called a saint um, in that way, uh, it takes a little, bit, a little bit of effort. See, in the, in the Catholic Church, they have saints, and then they have saints, the big halo-wearing kind that have the ST in front of their name. And to be a Catholic saint, you have to go through an official process called canonization. Now that's an, another weird word. It's too weird for me, even me to explain it. But a little bit about the process. You have to be someone who has been especially good and faithful um, in life. It doesn't hurt that you're Catholic either. But there's more. In order to be canonized, in order to be made a saint and given that title, you have to perform two miracles. And if that isn't tough enough, you have to perform two miracles after you're dead. See, anybody can do a miracle before you're dead, but after you're dead, only a real saint can do a miracle then. So if you can find witnesses that say that they asked for your help after you died and you helped them, and they receive the miracle, then you could be a candidate to be declared an official saint. Now, if you can do that, that's great. But does anyone here actually think that they live up to that kind of standard? It seems so far beyond that we don't even think about being a saint. In fact, we're more likely to say, I ain't no saint. And it's true, we may never be canonized by the Pope. But you are a saint, according to the Bible. Not because you're particularly good and kind, though I hope you are, and not because you play football for New Orleans, which I hope you don't, but because you're a Christian. And in the Bible, the word saint, hagios in Greek, uh, sanctus in Latin, simply means you have faith in Christ. Like in 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. To the church of God, 
which is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those in every place who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Who's called to be saints? The church of God, all those in every place who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Bible, saints aren't those who have an ST in front of their name. It's not for those who can perform miracles from the grave. Saints in the Bible are people like me and you. And I know that goes against our thinking. Sainthood is for people who are better than us, right? That's such a misconception that the New International Version uh, of the Bible that I usually preach out of doesn't even use the word saint. You could say that, that there are no saints in this Bible. You will not find the word in here. Because People confuse it. They see the word saint and they, they think it's those special, those special people who they could never be. And so in the New International Version, whenever it comes upon that word hagios, that word saint, they translate it as God's holy people or God's family. Here's 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 2. The 1 Corinthians 1, 2 in the NIV version. To the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be his holy people, called to be saints in the RSV, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. We are the saints. All of us who have accepted the call to be in God's family. Are you a Christian? Then you're a saint. You've been called by God for a purpose just as surely as St. Teresa or St. Thomas or St. Catherine or St. James the Less or any of those people who have an ST in front of their name. You are a saint. As a Christian, God has made you that. So why not live like one? And we say we ain't no saint as if we don't want to be one. But since you already are, why not set your sights on being the best saints that you can be? Set your sights on righteousness. There's another weird word. Set your sights on, on, on righteousness. Jesus says in, in Matthew 5, verse 6, in the Beatitudes, another weird word, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And in chapter 6, it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. What's righteousness? Righteousness is living rightly. It's living a godly, holy, just life. It, it's living a life that reflects God, who is the only one who's truly righteous. It's trying to live more like Jesus. This fall, uh, Duncan Cousant proud parents are in the front row, uh, was chosen by our, our youth director, AP, to be uh, the youth leader intern for this coming year. And shortly after he began, he, he came in and talked to me about an idea that he had, not necessarily for the youth group, but for young adults like himself. And the idea that, that he had was to to form a group of people who would push themselves to take their commitment to Christ to a whole new level. Not to settle for their present level of faith and righteousness, but, but to put God first from the moment they wake up and then to relentlessly pursue God throughout the day. He got this idea back in high school with uh, this workout class where, where a partner and he had covenanted together to push one another to be better each day than they were the day before. And if people can do that for their physical bodies, why not for their spiritual selves? Why not for their faith? Why not for their righteousness? Why not push each other to be more Christ-like, to be better servant leaders like Jesus calls us to do in Matthew 20? It sounded like a great idea. I said, go for it. So Duncan now has seven men this, that are part of this push group. That, that push each other, they've signed a covenant 
to, to allow themselves to do that, and they push each other to grow. To grow in their faith. To grow in their righteousness. Because that's what saints do. Saints grow in righteousness. And Duncan and his push group and you and me, we are all saints. That's what the Bible calls us. You are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, as we heard earlier. Now, sure, you aren't perfect. You don't wear a halo. You probably haven't performed a miracle, and since you're worshiping here, you're certainly not dead. But you are a saint. As a Christian, you're a saint. So live like one. Love like one. Strive for righteousness and justice and holiness. Don't settle. And for God's sakes, don't be a New Orleans saint, because that's a completely different thing. But be the best saint you can be. So, as we wrap up today and we think about, about sainthood, and uh, if you have somebody at home, you can go home and, and tell them the pastor said I'm a saint. But I've got actually three things I want you to do when you go home today. <clears throat> three challenges for the week for those saints at resurrection. The first one is this. I want you to think about a person who's been a real saint to you, wherever, whatever capacity that's been in. And I want you to thank them. Now, it may be somebody that helped introduce you to Jesus. It may be somebody that just performed a special kindness towards you. Um, and if you can't think of anybody, then, then find a veteran and thank a veteran. And say, thank you. You've been a real saint. The second thing is I challenge you to, to think like the people in, in Duncan's push group. To say, I want to be, I want to be different today than I was yesterday. I want to, to live a right life, a righteous life. I want to have stronger faith. I want to be a better servant. I want to be closer to God. And push yourself. Write down a covenant. Maybe invite somebody to join you with it. And say, hey, I want you to, to help push me. We can push each other. And we can be the kinds of people that we want to be and more that, that God wants us to be. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, as Jesus says. And then, then finally, this is the third thing. The third thing is never again say, I ain't no saint. Because you are. The Bible says so. At least the Revised Standard Version. <laughs> Let's pray. God, we thank you for all those people that we've encountered who have been saints to us. People who have shown us special kindness. Maybe we broke down on the side of the road and, and they helped us change a tire. Maybe we were discouraged and they, they said a word of encouragement. Maybe we are lost and they pointed us to you. Lord, we thank you for those kinds of saints who have impacted our lives. Especially we thank you for our veterans who have uh, served in a way that has made possible the life that we have here. Lord, and we pray that we might be saints like that to other people. We don't have to have an ST in front of our name. We don't have to have halos over our heads. And, and Lord, we're not even asking to perform miracles, but that would be pretty cool. But Lord, what we're asking for is that that we could live our lives with justice, righteousness, truth, and deep love so that others might be blessed and that we might be able to point to you and say, this righteousness is not from us. It's from you, Lord. So we pray that. And we give you thanks today.